Bo Sozoku. Literally Violent Speed Tribe. A biker subculture that had Japanese youth rampaging throughout the 80s and 90s, either ripping through the city on their motorcycles or organizing massive 50 on 50 brawls. As their name indicates, these gangs were criminal in nature, but unlike the Yakuza, the main spirit behind Bosozoku isn't one of organization or profit. Rather, it is a direct challenge issued to the social and governmental institution of Japan, and a middle finger addressed to the concept of authority as a whole. If, according to Japanese culture, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down, then members of this movement are the nails that refuse to bend. Profoundly anti-conformist, they form families of sorts that replace the warm and indolent embrace of modern society with the fiery and chaotic energy that their name represents. Despite peaking at around 42,000 members in 1982, a mere 0.03% of the total population at the time, the Bosozoku have had a massive influence on the local pop culture invading every aspect of it with the type of contagious fervor that only revolutionary groups can ignite. There are multiple explanations to this fascination, but the most obvious and immediate goes as follows. Japanese people, behind their facade of social conformity, all feel a deep craving for liberty, that their social mask, known as tatemae, prevents them from expressing. Instead, they live this desire for liberation through the figure of the rebel that the frenzy of youth biker groups represents perfectly. This yearning to break free from the rules is especially prevalent in teenagers and young adults. And it is therefore no surprise that the figure of the Bosozoku would be so present in their media of choice, namely anime and manga. They are widely represented in these productions especially in shonen series, and are recognizable by their trademark pompadours and flashy clothing. As a gaijin, you might have seen them without understanding their significance, and so I decided to shine a light on this often ignored or misunderstood counterculture, one that is sadly on the decline, as I believe that on top of its original sense, the term bosozoku also has a deeper significance. More than an identity, it is a way of life, one defined entirely by freedom. I could have picked from a number of publications, like Yu Yu Hakusho or GTO which both contain top-tier Bosozoku archetypes. But neither of them can compare to how immediately evident the representation I have selected instead is. And their delinquent characters deserve a more thorough observation, one that a video focused on the concept cannot offer. For an expose on autonomy, choosing Shiharu Shiba as the personification of the free man was obvious as his only role in Grapplebaki is to remind the reader that more than technique or muscles, the series is first and foremost about willpower. Forgotten by most, he is, in my opinion, one, if not the most badass fighter in the entire show, due solely to his combat style that relies entirely on guts and completely contradicts the idea of what a martial artist is supposed to be. In that sense, he also perfectly fulfills his role as the ideal of Bosozoku, as he is actively going against the grain and confronting his individuality with the codified and rigid rules of a martial arts competition, even one as ruthless as the maximum tournament. When reason dictates that the best way to win in a fight is to hit without getting hit, he willingly offers his body for destruction, confident that he will prevail regardless of what is thrown his way. Worst, he goes as far as to break his own limbs, something that, far from handicapping him, strikes the fear of God into his opponents. 
He is both an unstoppable force and an immovable object, a relentless spirit that characterizes the Bosozoku. うす。俺が何で喧嘩するかわかるかい。おお。This refusal to look after one's own health and constant thirst for danger is a contestation of sorts. A way to refute and refuse the conservative approach to life that characterizes Japanese society which has traded individual rights for the secure enclave of collectivism. Of course, Shiba is taking this ideology incredibly far, but if you listen to the teachings of biker gangs of old, it isn't too far off from the reality. To be free is also to separate oneself from self-preservation, and being willing to take on a hundred men in a fight is part of this show of resolve. Interestingly, this doesn't make the Bosozoku an anarchist group. On the contrary, they possess a strictly codified hierarchy, based on seniority, something that seems counterintuitive considering that their main desire is freedom. But unlike modern society, you choose to be part of this gang. And unlike your biological family, you decide whether or not you want to stay in it. It is free will that allows Shiba to put his life on the line, making him the type of man that is worth following, not because you are forced to, but because you want to. Individuality giving birth to a collective that itself promotes the individual, such is the essence of both Suzoku clans. In complete opposition with Japan's social dynamics, in which the surrendering of the self to the greater whole is not only a necessity, but an obligation. This defeatist mindset is represented in their idioms by the colloquialism shogunai, literally, it is what it is. This notion that humans must accept their fate is a pervasive tool of conformism, something that members of the violent speed tribes understand intuitively. By selecting Shiba as their champion, they regain control of their agency, his identity representing the freedom they aspire to reclaim. It is no mistake that Itagaki would have him face a judo wrestler first, which symbolizes Japan's institutions, with their rigid rules and interdictions. His second opponent, a Mike Tyson cameo, represents the unavoidability of fate, as the odds of a common street thug beating the heavyweight champion of the world are close to zero. Close to zero, but not impossible. That's all Shiharu Shiba needed. Teaching the crowd that a struggle against destiny, while difficult, is necessary, because it is where the true meaning of life lays. His battle against Iron Mike is really one against determinism, the idea that our futures are set, 
and that no amount of effort can change it. For the youth of Japan, this implies a life that is decided for them at birth. Excelling at school, then getting a good job, marrying and having kids. While these values might be objectively good standards to hold, they lose their virtue when imposed, leading society's most rebellious elements to reject them outright for the sake of not becoming cogs in the machine. By risking his life to protect his ideal, Shiba demonstrates the resolve needed to access true freedom, as a man unwilling to die for his convictions will soon realize he isn't willing to live for them either. The author insists on the almost mortal-like status that he assumes by refusing to give up a fight that could very well lead to his death, effectively turning him into the main character but also painting him as a pseudo-religious figure of sorts. Call me crazy, but I cannot help but sense similitudes between him and the Christ, in that he symbolically died for our sins, aiming by his sacrifice to show us the light we shunned for so long. If that spirit of rebellion resonates particularly well with the Japanese soul, it is also the bearer of a message that can echo strongly within any human. That is, the idea that we're all the saviors of our own liberty. And that putting our lives on the line to preserve it is the only thing we were ever meant to do.